two years ago, I toured two years ago. It's 2019. I don't even remember anymore. I toured with the band Metallica. It was one of the great, oh my God. It was, I, I can't even tell you. James reached out to me and he's like, hey man, would you want to, would you want to tour with us? And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I thought I was going to be doing whatever it was and stand up, whatever. And I also think whatever, whatever that band goes through or whatever headlines they get, whatever, I just know at that time for them to reach out to me and I was, I, you know, I was going through stuff with my wife. I was still worried about, you know, just got the he was they were one of, they were one of the first people i told about d's situation we flew out tell them and which now she's off the trial and i feel like that also was a big part of bringing me out whatever whatever scenarios i tore at metallica and while i was toured at metallica i had um i had uh um this guy on stage with me, a video camera, and it showed me on the screen, which that's another thing. People ask, you know, how did it come about? Well, once I got asked to tour with them, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no clue what I was doing. So I kept asking, like, what do you want? They're like, ah, we want like a, like a party. We want like um, maybe people, like, ah, I don't know, you just, uh, you know, it's kind of different. Do, uh, do, do shtick stuff, but not stand up, like just kind of, like what? I don't understand. We like what are we doing? Like what are we? Do? And I once I figured it out. It was the greatest gig ever. But I remember I was stressing out over this gig. I'm like, I'm a Metallica fan. How I how would I react if I was watching some guy come out before Metallica? Because I'm already in. Anytime I saw Metallica, whatever band was opening up, I was already aggravated. I was already aggravated I get I'm like who's who's opening oh my god how long are they on for well they do have that one song well you they'll probably do it last so let's let's just walk in the arena to see the last song and then hang out like I can't imagine what it's like to walk in an arena and they're like ladies and gentlemen please welcome not a band but a guy who's gonna talk to you and please be respectful. I would, I, back in the day, if I was 17, 18, with a dangling cross earring and a denim painted Judas Priest jacket on my back, I would have just been, the me you came out, I would have both middle birds flying, get off the stage! You suck! I think I did that to uh, Ingve Mountstein, to open up for ACDC, who made who. I was just like, get! Off the stage. Bring up Angus. Bring up bring up Isaac. So I, I definitely put myself in a fan's point of view where me coming out, the fans are like, Jim Brewer, like you stand up get off the stage. I'm here to see Metallica. So I'm freaking out. I don't know how I'm supposed to pull this off. And I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I know Lars is really creative, the, the drummer of Metallica. I've had really great times with Lars. Deep conversations, too, um, back in the day. And I fly out to San Francisco and I pretend I'm doing something. I say, hey, Lars, I ask him a month. I say, hey, are you around in June because I'm going to be in San Fran. We'd love to talk to you about what I'm working on, blah, blah, blah. He said, oh, yeah, I'm here X, Y, Z, like June 1, 2, 3. I went, oh, my God, I'm going to be there too. I had no intention going there. I just want to lock down dates when he was there. And I get reminded, hey, man, are you still going to be around on this June? I tried my gig. It was going to be awesome. And I'm meeting so-and-so. And I get out there and I say, hey, you want to meet? He goes, yeah, let's meet. We meet at uh, his worker's house. His worker's house. Beautiful place overlooking San Francisco Bay. And he, and he, he comes up these stairs and we're sitting up there. And, and, he, and I said, uh, he goes, like, what brings you here? I said, can I be up straight up with you, man? What, 
what, what am I doing? Like, why'd you ask me to do this tour? And he goes, this is what he said. He goes, you know, Jim, we've, I've watched you for so long. He goes, I feel like you know how to read a room and you kind of go with that flow. It's really, it's, so that's what we're hoping to get. Like we want the fans to have a fan experience. And he said, he goes, every time we have a band, like we're excited. We want to get the band out there. The fans are, you know, the fans are like, like me, like me. I don't want to watch the other band. I think my most exciting band, I loved Volbeat when they, but I, I, and he goes, this is, this is the moment when Lars changed my whole perspective and he gave me such freedom. He goes, you know, tell them how we met. What, how do you know James? How do you know the band? How long, the, the, the things we've done together, bring them in on that. And he goes, but the most important thing, you don't have to be funny. Don't, don't think you have to be funny. Just, just keep them entertained. And that changed the whole perspective. So he goes, then Lars goes, and again, say whatever you want about the band and, oh, you know, Napster, whatever. I'm just telling you. He goes, tell me what you need. And I said, my first concern is, is this, is this the, st the stage is in the middle? Because, yeah. yeah. All right. So that's like a, that's like the lion tamer coming out. Poosh, poosh. I'm losing section 108. Poosh, poosh. The lions are roaring in section 380. Oh, oh, oh. Poosh, poosh. That, a comedian needs to be facing, and I need to be facing the lions. So I go... A lot of my stuff relies on my facial expressions. Do you have screens? Is there any way you can get screens? And um, he goes, yeah, we can. Hold on a second. He picks up the phone. This is such a rock star. This is what you see in movies. He goes like this. He's, he's on the phone. He goes like this to me. He goes, hey, what are you doing, Lars? Hi, Log. I'm with Jim Brewer, and um, you know he's coming out with us on the tour. Because uh, Jim is asking about screens. Do we have Do we have screens that people could see Jim when he's on stage? He goes, uh, no, not the time being. It's like, can we get them? Like, the, you know how we did with the with the black tour and we'd be backstage and stuff. Can we go, we want to be able to go live and put that up. Is that, is that within the means? He goes, yeah, 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 we could do that. Um, yeah, if you could do that, that'd be amazing. How many camera guys do we have? Can we get a camera guy that's on gym the whole time? Even if he roams backstage? Yeah, we could do that. And he looks at me, he goes, is there anything else you think you need? I'm like, Elephants? I don't know. Cannons? He would have got whatever I wanted. He goes, thanks, John. And he hangs up and he goes, if you need anything, this is what Lars said, if you need anything, any type of help, please tell me I will get it done, especially if other people say no and you believe in it. You're the talent. I'm not going to tell you how to do your talent thing. That is an incredible, unegotistical thing to say. That is an incredible, unself-righteous thing to say. And I and I'll and I'll I will forever be thankful to Lars Ulrich for that. I really will. Check out the Bruniverse every Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. If you can't wait till then, sign up for Patreon and get it a day early, along with other exclusive content.